Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Can you and should you try and polish your car by hand? Look at this hammered paintwork here. We're gonna show you what you can actually achieve. So some of this is swirl marks. Some of this is clay bar marring and hologramming, you know, from the claying process. Just, and this is quite tough Audi paint as well. Look at it, terrible. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what this can do. Uh, and it will give you a good idea and you know we won't have any editing in place it will just be what you see is what you get now in this garage i've counted i've got 16 machine polishers in my garage at the moment i don't own them all but i own most of them um trust me it's not just the ones on those walls they're everywhere there's some more in there there's some more in the cupboards 16 lots of you don't have a machine polisher now Machine polishing is a great tool for correcting paint, deep defects, taking out sandy marks. If you're a professional detailer, you will need to be able to machine polish. But lots of guys at home are a bit scared to use machine polishers on their car, and they might just might not have one, and they might like polishing by hand. Now, the difference is with machine polishers, the abrasives that you get, pure abrasives that are really designed to be used um, by uh, a machine, you know, you put them on, you wipe them off, you degrease, and then in theory, nothing is left behind. Now, the main thing is when you're polishing by hand, you have to rely a little bit more on resins and fillers being in your, your hand polish, if you like. So some of your results are less permanent and are, are gonna be because of the filling effect. So if you put a resin in here, if you cover it, indeed, if you cover this all in olive oil, you'd lose these swirls for a little bit until you washed it and all the olive oil rinsed out. Well, a bit similar thing with some of these fillers, um, they'll sit inside the swirls and hide them. And then over time, as you wash the car, they'll erode and you will see some of the work is not permanent. That's the downside of polishing by hand, okay? But some of the results are still permanent. And depending on how hard you scrub, basically, your arm and scrubbing by hand can never really um, imitate what's being done by a machine polisher unless you want to spend hours on one particular part potentially. Okay, you, we've talked about polishing by hand so you get the idea. Now, the same fundamental rules, look at this, it's going to come up great, don't worry about all this, it was really bad. <laughs> um, the same fundamental rules apply to hand polishing as they do with machine polishing. Before you do this, you've got to go and wash the car deeply. So I'd recommend you pre-wash with something like Built Hamber Touchless, a very powerful um, you know, pre-wash that we've talked about loads on the Forensics Detailing channel. If you have a pre-wash there of your choice, use it. You don't need to go and buy any of the products I'm showing you here specifically. This is more about the overall process, but that product is very, very handy. Okay, so you cover your car in it, let it soak out, um, pressure wash it off. You can clean the wheels while you're waiting if you like to, all that sort of stuff, all that discussion. Um, once you've pre-rinsed the car, and really, when you're prepping a car with the um, pre-rinse, really get in to those nooks and crevices, you know, nooks and crannies on the car. Really blast out all of the doors and blast out all of the edges with your pressure washer. Don't get too close. You know, if you ever poked your hand with the pressure washer, don't do that. You'll know how powerful they are but really get in there, you know, come back a little bit, about at least a foot, depending on your pressure washer, and just blast out all the gaps. So you get all the, all of the like grime and sludge and dirt out of all of the um, nooks and crannies. If you don't do that, you're gonna pull it out when you polish and it's gonna be horrible. So that's really important. The next thing is after you've pre-washed the car, um, in this instance, I just save some of the touchless in the lance and I spray it all back over the car and then take a bucket of clean water and a Chanel wash mitt and go back over the car, you know, put the, put the touchless back all over it so it's covered in foam again and contact wash it. Um, you can also put your, if you don't like doing that, you can also put your shampoo back into the bucket and um, contact wash it with your contact wash shampoo and again, you know, I tend to use this, not very foamy. You use like five mil of it or something, in the seven mil in the bucket, you use hardly any, so it costs pennies. Use whatever shampoo you've got. Do not use ceramic shampoos or wax shampoos or, or ceramic pre-washes or wax pre-washes or whatever when you're prepping a car to be polished because you're 
trying to get the material off so you can polish on the surface, not add all that shiny material, okay? So use pure detergents, you know, um, for this prepping process. Uh, when you are contact washing the shampoo, all this stuff is very important, you know? I've got to, get, got to tell you about it or else the videos have no real value. When you're prepping it and you're doing that contact wash, always have a nice uh, brush, and this is a Hogshair one. Um, it's got a bit of poke, you know, I wouldn't use one of those soft detail factory ones when, it, when a car's pretty dirty, you know. And just poke in all of these crevices and poke in here when you, you know, and poke under here and poke in here and any area where dirt might get trapped, you know, all of those little swage lines, you get in there. Because you poke in there, if there's any bits of polish or dirt in there, you just get them out. Poke under the door handles. Poke in this fuel cap thing. Poke the hell out of it. Get poking. Poke in there, <laughs> poke under that glass, poke in there, poke under there. Don't leave that bit under there, that always gets left. Make sure you wash all the way down to the bottom. Poke that panel gap there, poke around there. It's all about the poke, poke. <laughs> if you don't poke, poke around the grills. If you don't poke, when you go to polish, all that dirt will be there. Then you're ready to jet wash again and get all of those bits of dirt you've just released off of the car. Jet wash it again. I know this is a lot of jet washing, just do it. And when you're jet washing again, be really cool and go around all of those panel gap areas. Really important. Okay, after that, are we ready to polish? No, we are not ready to polish. The whole point of polishing the car is to make the surface, or the whole point of detailing the car is to make the surface contamination free and um, defect free, you know, there's no swirls in it or minimal swirls, and then glossy and then protected. A bit like your furniture in your house. You've got old wooden furniture and you put that polish over it. It's really there to protect it, okay, as well as enhance the finish. Um, what is the point of just putting on wax uh, on your car if you haven't got all of that thick layer of dirt and contamination off of the car? There's no point. There's no point. The car's not going to look good. Uh, it's not going to feel good, and you're just putting protection on top of contamination. So you get your clay bar, <laughs> and I tend to recommend this clay because it's UK made by Built Hamber, and uh, it's affordable as well. You get 200 grams for I think 11 pounds. Their light clay is still pretty aggressive, you know, it's effective. So uh, you know, I would go with that. Use their heaviest clay on only on overspray, really. And if you've got very heavy contamination, you could use their medium clay, whatever it's called. Can't remember if regular's their medium. I wish they just said heavy, medium, and light, because then I could remember. <laughs> um, but you get their white clay, because that, that works, even on heavy contamination, to be honest. Um, clay the car really thoroughly. Mix up a sprayer full of warm water and a couple of drops of shampoo or a couple of drops of waterless wash if you like and go over the car and clay every panel you will see most of the contamination down the side of the car down here because it flies up out of the wheel and flies off, off off the tire and you get a lot of tar down here so good idea to know if a car's you can sometimes clay a bonnet and think oh this car's really clean and you go down here and clay and it's absolutely filthy well it, this bonnet was filthy <laughs> and full of tar and all sorts of stuff. And this was even worse, very, very dirty car, very, very dirty car, so it's taken some claim. Um, how long did it take me to wash and clay this car? Uh, about an hour and 15 minutes filming as well, and that includes setting up, so reasonably quick. I busted my you-know-what, I went, I'm going quickly. I think you should really take between one and two hours to prep a car that's really dirty. And my prep wasn't brilliant, by the way. You could have done a lot better job. Barely touched the alloys, just gave them a quick, quick, um, you know, honorary poke. Because um, I've really got a lot to do and I've got a lot of stuff to film. And uh, yeah, so I'm focusing on getting the paintwork sorted. I haven't got to touch the inside of this car either, which is going to help me. Right, now we have decontaminated the car. We dry it off with a drying towel. And I, you know me, I like these Korean twisted ones, so that's the ones I tend to recommend. Now, in terms of polish, guys, there are a number of hand polishes. This is like my 10-year-old bottle of super resin polish that's an out-of-date formulation, but it still works great, and I'm going to use it. I've, I've been saying that for years. Every time I demo this, 
you know, I want to get my money's worth out of this. There's nothing wrong with this. The new formulation's supposed to be a little bit less white powdery, you know, and a bit less chalky or whatever, because this is quite a chalky polish. And I think that that's, that's okay. It's quite a light polish to buff. And we're going to protect with the ultra high definition wax, which is a lovely um, premium wax. Now it's important. It's not necessarily about the product. You could do this with um, poor boy's black hole, you know, show colored glaze that you could do exactly the same technique with and then use a poor boy's wax or whatever wax you've got in your stock. Um, you could do this with built hamber cleanser polish and use the double speed wax or the ultra hydro wax. It wouldn't really make that much difference. Well, you know, you might prefer those products, you know, um, whatever you've got. So you don't need to go and buy necessarily what I'm using, but this is the one that probably perhaps everyone relates to that's been around for years in the UK. I used to use this stuff when I was a kid. Used to more, the more you used to buff on the paintwork, I used to get the old cloth and buff, 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 buff. The paint would really gloss up and you'd really buff into it. It felt like it was a lot more abrasive back then. You really buff it, the paint felt amazing, but you'd know you'd done it at the end of the day, your arms would be killing you. Anyway, one thing that I think is really important if you're gonna to attempt to polish a car by hand is a good applicator. So I'm lucky, because over the years I've got like all these different types of applicators. This one's like an Adams one that Prestige Car Care sells. So it's a bit tougher on top and a bit softer on bottom, on the bottom, a bit, a bit like me. Um, which means you can just get hold of it. And you know, you want a good applicator, you can get hold of. If you're using some tiny Mickey Mouse applicator, you know, even this would be a bit small and a bit too soft for a polish. Even that would be a bit too small and soft for a polish. That would be ideal. That's pretty good, but it's too soft. They, these would be good, these AliExpress things, they'd be great. You want something a little bit stiffer, okay? A little bit with a bit of stiffness. Now, what we're gonna do is, have I already showed you how bad this paintwork is because of all the clay marring? Well, let's get right in there, look at that. Look at that. We are not gonna get this. This, this car is really, really needs to be machine polished with heavy cutting compounds and wool probably because it's nasty. But we're gonna see what we can do with this. So how do you use your filler, glaze, polish, whatever you want to call it. You know, what do they call this? Super resin polish. Yeah, I mean, people get hung up on this polish thing. This is a polish, basically. It's there to make your paint shine. It's there to beautify, tenderize your paintwork and make, make it feel good, make it look good and get rid of defects. That's all you need to understand about it. Um, so we've given that a good shake. Probably gonna come out like spaghetti, it's been in there for so long, that's good. And we're just gonna get three dollops. We might need a little bit more, because that's, let's just see how we get on with that. We'll take this. We're gonna need some cloths as well. I've got these waxes dead cloths, which are ideal. They're ideal for everything, basically, these cloths. They're all rounders. They're not the big soft ones that you sometimes see me talking about. The main thing is they're clean. Do not go into your glove box and get that microfiber cloth that's been sat and used to wipe everything in your car. That's what some people do. It's the only cloth they've got. It's filthy and they'll go and buff their car and use that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Sorry. Right, let's put this down here. And we'll go over here. If I need any more polish, I can. Right, so it's all good. The paintwork's gonna look pretty good while I do this. So you're gonna to have to work in small sections, guys. If you want to tape up all your edges, um, you can, but you're not gonna do that if you're polishing by hand. So again, I'm just gonna dab this out so I'll get the polish under control. I'm gonna put it over my little area, a bit like I was if I was machine polishing. And now I'm ready to polish. Now all I'm gonna do is just work in circles. Now, fortunately, if you think this is an easy process and you're not gonna bust any calories, you are wrong. You're gonna to have to bust some calories. You're gonna to have to work this product. But you can only do this for so long before you'll be exhausted. So you just gotta get in the zone and imagine that you're doing a machine polish but you did it by hand. So just little circles, bit of pressure. And just work it. This, this applicator makes it so, so much better.
Okay, you're gonna hear me puffing and puffing them. By the end of the day, if I was doing this whole car by hand, my arm would be absolutely killing me. All right. Just gotta keep going. to ache. It's starting to ache. I think you'd be mad to do this. But you've only got to do it once and it is satisfying and this is how it all used to be done. Now here's, here's the bad news that the more you keep rubbing on this panel the more you're working the abrasives. <laughs> so as long as it's not drying up and you're dry buffing, as long as it's still sort of got an oily feel to it, you can keep going. But really, you've got to remember, you've got to repeat everything I'm doing here over the entire car. And realistically, <laughs> what I've just done there is probably about as much as you can ever do, because you've got to do the entire car. So for a demo, I could sit here buffing on this for a good like five minutes, get better results, but I'm not. I'm going to tire, I'm going to fatigue and I'm not gonna be able to do it around the entire car, no matter how much I'd like to convince you I could. My body just couldn't handle it. So that's a realistic amount of buffing. Now with super resin polish, you wanna let the solvents flash out of it and then the resins in it are gonna harden and fill um, those horrible swirls and clay bar marring. And indeed, if you just look at all of that clay marring over there and you sort of look at our layer here, you can see the paint's improved a little bit, but the proof will be, the proof will be in the buffing. Okay, so I usually leave this for about 10 minutes, but let's just have a look what the instructions say, or the destructions. They've written in oldie English. Where does it say? Apply polish to cloth where I'm using it and use a light circular motion. Finishing straight lines, all right, well, whatever. Um, to remove haze or scratch, increase pressure, yeah. Apply to individual panels, entire body. So basically, it's, you've got to put it on your buffet. That's it. Apply extra gloss protection, which is probably a bit easier than using the wax, but obviously the wax didn't exist when they wrote this instructions. Uh, if you get any of it on like, on plastic trim, you can use a glass cleaner, which is fair enough. Yeah, that'll work. Does it say how long to leave it though? It doesn't, does it? Hmm. Allow residue to dry before lightly buffing. That'll do. You shouldn't really need to get a glass cleaner out. Even, so if that was black plastic trim, you'd just wipe it off, you know. But if it's allowed to really dry on there for days, you might need to put something on it to break it back down again. So, we then take our clean microfiber towel and we just buff this we just buff it I'll tell you what it is satisfying like it's really satisfying we've taken out most of that horrendous clay marring where I probably won't have polished as well is right up into those edges and right up into that door bit but so do not expect perfection this is this is the realism of doing polishing um, by hand. This is real. You've, there's no jiggery pokery. So terrible, terrible paintwork, improved paintwork, terrible paintwork, hologrammy stuff, yeah. improved paintwork. So with, you know, that's the detailer's view of it. Decent, but yeah, yeah. You, I know lots of people watching this as professional detailers will be like, well, you should machine polish that. You can get that a lot better. This is the problem. You're on hard Audi paint, you know, no hand polishing, unless you want to work on this panel, do like about 10, 10 passes by hand to improve that. You're just not going to do it. It's not efficient. So, um, yeah, we've got a much better panel than what we started with, but far from perfect. But if you turn that light off, you imagine, you know, even with the light in my garage, you know, well, let's just give that a little buff. It's far from perfect, but I mean, it's glossy, it's better. 
as a percentage improvement, what would you say that was? 70% better from that one pass? Well, maybe more than that, I don't know. Whatever you want to say, but a lot better. But no cigar. Once you've got, gone around the entire car doing that, you'll have one arm like Arnold Schwarzenegger or like me. Your other arms and limbs will be all skinny and like little sparrows kneecaps. Um, <laughs> once you've done that, you then take your pesto wax and you can take another applicator. Don't, don't use the one you're using with the polish. And we'll just do that. Why not? Why not? I think I use this one. Uh, should I get a fresh one? Oh, that'll do. No, I use this one with the auto glim. It's a bit waxy, but never mind. And we'll do this with one hand. Let's go with that side. Pick up some wax, ideally with one hand. And this is quite a therapeutic, cool thing. I just need a bit more wax, sorry. Better. I mean, just put on your wax. I still love doing this, but it is labor intensive, but there's something very, very nice about this. And you just want to coat every single panel with it. And this Auto Glim wax will dry cure. It will haze out. Uh, give it 10 minutes again, at least 10 minutes, I think. Then buff it. If you leave it for longer than 10 minutes, it's not difficult to remove. That's one of the signs of good wax, actually, that it'll always be reasonably light uh, to remove. That will protect the surface so that going forward, once your whole car has got a layer of this material wax over it, all of the things that stick and, you know, the contamination that gets stuck on the panel and you feel it all dry and rough on the panel. Well, when you've got a nice layer of wax there and you keep washing your car every week, that panel should say relatively silky smooth and waxed and it just forms like a little barrier to stop things sticking to it, you know, getting into the paint, especially with that fallout. I've seen firsthand, we've done some videos on it, even the wheel waxes, they don't last long, but where they're on the car, they stop the fallout contamination and embedding into the paintwork. So, I'm out of breath. <laughs> That's it, guys. Uh, I'll give that a few minutes. I'll buff it off. That will also improve the paintwork a little bit further because that wax is going to carry on filling those swirls. I'll just give it a buff now. You know, it should wait a little bit longer. You get more durability. But it's a lovely wax to buff. And um, yeah, we've had a good, good improvement on the car. Looks much better without the shiny light, doesn't it? You're like, oh, it's perfect now. No, we know it's not perfect, but it's a lot better, guys. So you can go from a dog's dinner to respectable. And if you did that over all of your car and you weren't in a garage with your, your workshop lighting on it or good detailing lighting and it was outside, you'd think, wow, my car looks lovely now. And for 99% of people, that feeling is good enough. But for us detailing um, nutters, you know, I personally think investing in a machine polisher makes a massive difference because one, it makes it a lot easier to achieve that correction. Two, the correction you're getting with the abrasives are permanent. You know, you're putting, it's less a filling effect and more permanent results. Yeah, and, and three, you can also use those machine polishers to fix little little scuffs and transfer things and sort your headlights out. And, you know, you could even get like little rayon pads from them, do your glass with them. You can do so many things with those machine polishers. Um, and they're relatively affordable now if you want them to be. So hand polishing is something which will always be around because not everyone's going to have all of that gear or even have a garage. Uh, and there is a place for it, guys. So I hope you found this video really useful. And, uh, Put in the comments if you hand polish and if you've taken the plunge and got a machine polisher. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a video for um, how to polish your car for beginners, an updated one, 
um, using a, an affordable um, entry level dual action polisher. Put in the comments if you still polish your car by hand. Put in the comments any tips you've got for getting better results than I got there. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can if you've got the old Arnie arm. If you need the old Arnie arm, where is it? There. Other than that, guys, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. Bye for now. Doug.